I get it because when I was 15, 16, the only thing I wanted was a six pack, right? You don't care about anything else. You might not even care about your health, right? You just want to get bigger, get more muscles so that probably girls will like you or maybe even your peers will like you more, right? And I'm thinking like, okay, now when I tell people and they see, you know, my physique, I've been working out for eight years, like eight years and I'm going to work out for another 40 years. So the time horizon that people think on is so small and I get it because it's like, I want to improve my life. How, how soon until I have the six pack, right? I think you have to change in your brain. This is not a, I've met my goal. Now it's time to what? Stop working out. You're going to keep working out. So whether you get fit in 18 months, in two years, in three years, right? If your life three years from now is so much better than it was today, I think you'll be far happier than saying like, oh, I wasn't, didn't have my six pack in six months. Yeah. Well, you're, you're also, you're asking as, as some, a couple of guys who were 16, 17 year old dudes, not that long ago, you're asking a 16 or 17 year old to think about a prolonged future, which is an impossible oh, ask. Incredibly hard, I could yeah. barely think to the next week when I was that age. So it, I challenge all of you guys listening out there that may be younger than us. You know, I'm 26, almost 27. You're 23, right? Just turned 24. Yeah. Just turned 24. Uh, happy belated. Thank you. Um, you really need to challenge that perspective of, you know, one of my favorite quotes is success. 90% of success can be boiled down to doing the obvious thing for an extraordinary amount of time without convincing yourself you're smarter than you are. It's the obvious things and you just have to do them for a really long time. It's getting in the gym when you don't want to, when you do want to, it's eating the right foods when you want to, when you don't want to, it's sleeping when you want to, when you don't want to. If you just do that, those tasks compound on one another. And it is really hard. I'll admit it is, it is really difficult to do that, to have that mentality of, he just told me he's been doing this for seven years. I was hoping for 70 days. I'm sorry, man. Like you're going to look different in 70 days. And that's, that's a great thing, but you're going to be a different human in seven years. So if, if more young guys, the guys that listen to you can adopt that mentality, they will be winners because the time's going to pass anyway. I mean, why not, why not make it count? Right? Yep. I love that quote. Yeah. Cause I have a photo from, uh, it was 18 months after I, and I've been consistently lifting. Like I, there was no breaks. There was no nothing for eight years now, 18 months in, I've been doing that for almost two years and I looked different, but I didn't look good. Right. Eight, 18 months in and people are like, what were you doing wrong? Like <laughs> I literally, when I show that photo, people are like, you, you clearly weren't educated. I'm like, no, I consumed hours of fitness media every single day. It's that I started from zero, zero. zero. And so, yeah, you know, it, it took much longer for me to build the physique that people are like, okay, now you're jacked. Um, and so I, 18 months in, I could have been like, you know what? Don't look the way they want to. This doesn't work for me. <laughs> yeah. What you refer to as, and I really like this term, like the big rocks versus the little rocks when it comes to fitness. And I'm curious if you want to just expand on that topic. We've already kind of touched on it, but uh, I think that it's such a good concept to frame how you think about what you should be doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the big rocks and the little rocks of fitness, I don't think I can trademark that term. I think that was prob- probably from someone I heard along the way. But the way I see it, we have big rocks of training or big rocks of physical fitness and we have small rocks of physical fitness. And if you've seen anyone, the way I like to frame this, if you see anyone who's been fit for a long time, who got fit and stayed that way, the odds are they're not thinking about the things you are as a beginner. And the odds are they have these big rocks pretty much mastered to where 80% of the year, 90% of the year, these are dialed. So I see the big rocks as your nutrition, your training, your movement, your recovery. And ultimately a piece of this, I would say is your internal dialogue, which you can argue is maybe not a big rock, but it was huge for me. So I'm going to make it a big rock. I have training and movement separated for a reason, because a lot of times I hear people, I'm in the gym four days a week and I'm absolutely crushing it. And my nutrition's great. I'm eating clean, whatever that means. And I'm not losing a pound. Well, you just told me you're in the gym four days a week for an hour. That means you're moving four hours a week, but the other 12 hours a day you're awake, you're at your desk or on the couch. So the big rocks look like this. Get in a training program. Now, if you're brand new to fitness, get in the habit of walking in the gym door and sweating. But once you have that habit established, it's time to hop on a program. What does a program look like? How do you find a good program? The best program is going to be the one that you can and will stick to for forever, right? Compliance is the science. You will see the best results from what you like and will stick to. For me, it's not the same as what it's probably going to be for you or for you, right? We all like different shit. Whatever that is, find a program that hits the major muscle groups, your chest, shoulders, and triceps, your back, biceps, and your legs, right? And abs, if you want to throw that in and find a program that hits those maybe one to two times a week with high intensity training somewhere, one rep shy of, or at failure, right? You have to stress the muscle to give it a reason to grow and then do that repeatedly, rinse and repeat for three to six months, and you'll be happy with the outcome. It's an unsexy answer, but 
if someone's giving you unsexy at fitness advice, it's probably the right advice. That's the thing that I think people also struggle with understanding is they want, you know, the BOSU ball, one-legged split squats, and they want the workouts to change every five days. It's like, no, if you want to look the same, definitely do that. But hop on a program you like that has the same key movements and forces you to get stronger in those movements by either adding weight to the bar or increasing your reps. Then you've got your movement. Walk 10,000 steps a day. Like That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to make it harder than it has to be. Just find a way to walk for an hour a day. Your nutrition, everybody should be hitting their protein goal. How do you find your protein goal? If you have less than 50 pounds of body fat to lose based on your guess, just try to eat your body weight in grams of protein. I'm 190 pounds. I try to eat 190 grams a day. Do you need more or less depending on the research? Yeah, but we won't worry about that, all right? Um, if you have more than 50 pounds to lose, people should be trying to strive for their goal weight in grams of protein. Now, a lot of times if you've got body fat to lose, one of the things I do with my coaching clients is if they're new to this stuff for the first four weeks, we don't track a calorie. I just give them a protein goal and I say, you hit that and you eat as much of the food off of this list as you want. And that behavior, we're, found, we're solidifying the behavior of whole foods tends to create the calorie deficit. Because if you're just, most of you guys just aren't eating enough protein, right? So they're hungry all the time. If you can eat more protein and hit that goal every day, you're probably gonna see results and progress in building muscle, burning body fat. Last piece, or last two pieces, recovery. Just sleep six to eight hours a night. Seriously, stop negotiating. TikTok will be there tomorrow. Netflix will be there tomorrow. Um, and lastly, positive internal dialogue. For me, this is a newer one, but I really do believe that if you're, the one of my favorite, not to get to another isms, is the person you spend the most time with is yourself. Try not to lose that person's respect. If you constantly shit on yourself inside of your head and call yourself dumb, fat, ugly, stupid, you're going to start to believe it and you're going to start to project that energy. So just be nice to yourself. Like you may not have this figured out. Just say, I don't have this figured out yet, but I will. And start to stack the proof and the wins of becoming a fitter person through those big rocks. And once you have those big rocks down, worry about the little rocks. You can fuck around with supplements, pre-workouts, tweaking what, what other things you want to have in that diet. But until you have that thought, those five things dialed, nobody should touch a little rock. That's my take. I completely agree with that. That's why I'm so skeptical because I do post photos and I'll probably be posting a photo later today for, um, the Echo Vision Black Friday sale, which is happening, but the um, people will see that. And their immediate questions is the same questions that they'll ask everybody. What is your workout routine? I tell them straight up, I am not going to give you my workout routine because if you do the same reps of I do and the same sets of I do of every exercise that I do, you won't look like me. And that's not saying that I'm something special. It's that I have eight years of experience and it's what works for me. I didn't go through the literature to decide how I work out, right? It's, I did it through experience over that amount of time. And mm -hmm. the same goes for my diet. People will ask me, I did post one of my meals just because people were curious and almost people are like surprised. And it's like, what do you expect? It's grass fed meat with some fruit and some, you know, fermented, it was pickled onions. And it's like, it's, it's simple, right? There's no, there's n nothing complicated here. And I think that's where, uh, yeah, people like to get lost in the weeds. Um, and, I get it, right? What you said, I, I really liked about it's an unsexy answer. And that's because you feel like the answer should be something different, right? Yeah. You should tell me something that I didn't know. It shouldn't be so simple. Yeah. And and that's where they're like, I'm not fit because of something I don't know. It's like, no, you probably do know. You just aren't doing the things to change it. Yeah. And they, they all know. They all know that they should be eating better food. They all know that they should be in the gym more and they're not doing it. The magic you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding. That's probably my favorite quote of all time outside of a few Hormozy quotes is most people know exactly what they want to do, but as humans, we're flawed in the way that we don't want to do the obvious things. You know, it's not our brain's job physiologically to keep us jacked and lean. It's just to keep us safe in our little bubble and going to the gym. If we're, if we've never been and doing all these things that are uncomfortable, our brain perceives that as a threat, right? It's a stressor. You have to break past that. And then we can maybe talk about mindset later down, but like shifting your mindset and leaving your ego at the door is going to lead to you developing more as a human being physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually more than anything in the world. Like and that's why I, I do all the weird shit. I do the cold exposure, the ultra marathons. I grow a lot as an individual when I challenge myself and you should too.